I'm excited to bring in my colleague from TechSoup, Kevin Mahal, who's going to talk a little bit about, about process and workflow automation, i.e. putting the robots to work. Really quickly, a little bit about me. I joined TechSoup in 2019. I've moved up and around during that time. I began my technology certification path in 2020. I've since obtained several different certifications across multiple platforms as I've moved into customer success and then ultimately into my current role as a senior technical customer success manager. I am one part solutions architect, like the design and onboarding. I'm one part sales consultant, if you will. At this point, I actually hit over 2,000 consultations this past November. So I've met with a couple of orgs and hopefully have made some positive impact along the way. So what is process automation? Again, very like low level. I don't want to get, this could be a, a, an hour talk on itself. Process automation involves using technology to perform repetitive tasks or processes without human intervention. If I asked the audience here to raise their hands, if they currently do anything that they feel is even mildly redundant, I'm willing to bet that probably all of us would do that. The goal of process automation is to streamline and optimize workflows by automating routine activities, reducing errors, and enhancing efficiency. Now, process automation software itself refers to these specialized tools or platforms designed to automate these tasks, often utilizing algorithms, scripts, or workflows designed to execute and manage the automated processes. Now, what problem does this solve? Redundancy. We, and not the nonprofit space, are lacking exponentially two things, res financial resources and time. While the money issue can go one way or another, the time issue, I think, is something that we all could potentially address using, using these types of tools. So these are some examples of it. So it's I don't, to get away from the generalization into the more specific, there are things like robotic process automation, business, pro uh, business process automation, AI, workflow automation, and then IT process uh, automation as well. Here's the tools of the trade. Zapier, for those that may not be familiar, Zapier, Power, which is part of the Microsoft 365, MuleSoft. Uh, there are way more than this. It, it goes well beyond that. I'd really let everyone to see what this looks like in action. Now, this is where the automation magic happens. The first step is our trigger. This is what kicks off a zap. Since we're managing leads, I'm going to pick my leads app, Facebook lead ads. Now, if you don't use Facebook lead ads, no problem. Zapier connects with thousands of apps, so we should have you covered. Once you select the app, pick the trigger event. This tells Zapier what to look out for. In this case, a new lead. Next, we'll connect our Facebook account. Once the account's connected, select the specific Facebook page we want the Zap to monitor and the form our leads are responding to. Now that this is all set, let's test the trigger. And there's a new lead. Let's keep going. We want our new leads to feel special. So we're gonna send them a personalized email, but I'm only gonna write it once. Just like when we added Facebook, we'll pick out our email app, Gmail. Now your app doesn't have to be Gmail since we have thousands of apps that connect to Zapier. This feel familiar? Setting up this step is a lot like our first step. Pick the app, pick the action, connect your account, and then you can get specific. With Gmail, we need to add in our send from email address, a subject line, and write the welcome message. Then we pick the Facebook information to populate into the email. I need their email address to make sure this gets to them. And here in the email body, I'll add their first name from Facebook lead ads. That way it'll feel like a real person wrote and sent this. Now we can test this step. Zapier says it worked. So let's go check Gmail. Look at that. There's the email. Just like that, you've automated your lead management. Just remember to turn the zap on. You're on the way to making copying and pasting and CSV uploads a thing of the past. But wait, you just saw that Facebook lead ads sends a lead's full name. It's kind of weird to address someone by their full name. So you want to split that name into the first and last name. Jump back into your zap and click on this little plus sign between steps. We're going to add a step here. Let's use one of Zapier's tools, the formatter. Formatter can do nearly anything, but in this case, we want it to split text. So once the app is selected, we'll find our text options, choose the action like before, 
and pick out the field from Facebook we want Formatter to change. We've selected the name field. Now I just need to tell Formatter where to split the text. In this case, the default is fine, a space. Done. Let's test this and jump back into our Gmail step real quick. We need to replace this output. We don't want to use the Facebook field name anymore. We want to use the first names from Formatter. And voila, Formatter is grabbing the name from Facebook, splitting it, and sending that to Gmail. Now, it's your turn. Create your own zap. Start small if you want or go big. Either way, once you're done, you'll get back to doing what matters. This is an example of some automations that I currently have running, two of these. One of these is based around, the concept and idea around this is that you are, the, a lot of nonprofits use, have a large tech spread. Sprout, they experience technology sprawl. They're using Google, they're using Microsoft, they're using Monday, they're using Calendly, they're using this, that, this, and that. Um, we go after them because they're free, but the next thing that we know is, is that we have a dozen applications that don't communicate with each other. The, the main goal and focus of a tool like, for example, Zapier, uh, is to be able to use APIs or webhooks to communicate with one another uh, on processes. Perfect example uh, is the flow that I'm gonna show here. Um, the trigger on this, because it's always trigger and action, that's how the process automation works, is that when a Calendly invite, which is the tool that I use, is created, that I want to bring over the information that is stored in the field lines into a monday.com board that I maintain. These applications do not normally talk to each other. And while they may have open APIs, if you don't know how to code, you, this is probably not going to be the easiest thing to do. So I would highly recommend considering a tool like this. So what this flow is ultimately going to do is when that information I'm collecting in my calendar, rather than me have to manually enter it into the dashboard for my technical consults, it brings over all of that information. I'm going to go back here. Okay. The main takeaways here is that process automation all in conjunction with AI offers a way for nonprofits to do more by do more with less, reducing the total number of hours of staff committed to tasks, allowing your organization to work across application platforms. If you have to have tech sprawl because of IT costs, this is a way to, to uh, inexpensively get those systems uh, to communicate with one another. Uh, if you have any questions around this, I answer technology questions across our entire global community. Um, I only speak English fluently. I do know that it's Spanish and German, but that said, you can either reach out to me at the email address here or my colleague, Tony, at the address that's also posted here.